Thank you. Thank you very much for this introduction. Um, I'm going to be speaking today about the art of estimation and I'm actually going to be talking about something that happens before uh, what Loi was actually talking about because he was telling us about how to do the product but before that we have to get to that point so we have to do an estimation. Uh, so I thought that we could just start by estimating. So let's estimate. Okay guys, are you ready? Imagine that we have a very, very content rich website. So a client comes and he says, or she, I want to have a search. Fine. Okay, so this is basically what we hear all the time. You know, have you heard that before? So how can we estimate it? Do you have an idea? Is it a five day work, 10, 20? We don't know. And that is actually like Loi said before, just guessing. Because with this requirement, I want, I want to have a search, we don't know if it is going to be five, 10 or 20 days project. So it is basically impossible. Uh, this is nothing new and for all of us, this even Dilbert knows, you know, that if we don't know what to estimate, we also don't, you know, the developers also don't know, so nobody will know. Uh, for estimation, you need relevant information. You need information about what you should estimate before. And I'm actually going to try to go through that process with you. But before, I would like to check if any of you, now I don't know, like, are you product managers? Are product managers in here? Okay, a few developers, clients or product owners, yeah. So then I ask you, have you ever heard any of these comments in your company? You know, oh, clients are impossible. They're always changing their minds and the scope, and yes. Have you heard that? Good, me too. This one is very popular. <laughs> have you, you know, our developers are so bad at it and they can't estimate, you know, have you heard that? Or this one, this is a very popular one. The product was sold too cheap. Uh -huh. We know better than the people who are selling the product. So my point is going to be, if you have heard any of these comments, then there is something wrong with your internal process. So you have to look at yourself and look at your company and look at the people who are working in your company and see what can we change so we don't hear these comments. So let's then look at the process of an estimation. Okay. Uh, before that, it's actually important to know what are we, like, who are the people involved in an estimation process. So we have the client, and the client, uh, he knows exactly what he wants. He just doesn't know how to get there, but he has a really good idea about what he really needs. So then we have the, the line there. That's actually the line representing uh, the client and then the company. In my case, for example, we are a web company, so we're most of the time doing projects for clients that are not in our company. Uh, maybe some of you are working for, for example, the banks, then the clients are maybe other departments. So you have the product manager and you have the developer. And this process here, I'm going to be going through to see how we can estimate better. Okay, let's start. Uh, so to make an, the example better, to m for you guys to visualize a little bit better of what the problem is that we are actually dealing with every day at work, then let's make a real example of one of uh, one of projects I've been working on. So that's the, the Icelandic Institute of Natural uh, History, or Náttúrufræðistofnun Íslands uh, in Icelandic. So they came with a very good request of saying, we want to have a search on our website. Uh, they knew every exactly what they wanted, but still the request was like that in the beginning. So we said, okay, yeah, maybe to show you a little bit like, this uh, website is a very, very content-rich website, so it has a lot of information about everything that is living in Iceland. So, do they want the simple search? 
you know. Uh, a simple search could, for example, look like that, where you just put in butterfly and you get results. Or do they want the advanced search where you put in butterfly and you can basically check like, okay, do I want to see the news? Do I want to see the species? Do I want to look more into details about <laughs> something that the people have been writing about or documents? How can we know? How can we know based on this question in the beginning, we would like to have a search on our website, whether they are meaning the simple search or the advanced search. So that is then the process that we are going to go through now, which is it all starts there. You have the client. And like I said, the client knows exactly in his head, and he has probably also other people like in a web committee, and they have been discussing this all the time, like what they really want. Uh, so my job as a project manager is basically to go to the client and talk to him <laughs> and talk a lot because we have to figure out, number one, what problem is this client trying to solve? Is he trying to make a search because he wants people in Iceland to be able to find something better or is it for the employees or is it for somebody else? So we have to discuss this. Um, we also have to ask a lot of questions. Um, then comes maybe one of the very interesting points. That's the budget. You know, he can have a lot of ideas, but the client doesn't have a budget maybe. So we also have to put that into these meetings and questions that we put in the beginning. Uh, we have to look at a lot of websites. In the case of Náttúrufræðistofnun uh, Íslands, or the, this example I'm making, you know, we look at where all their content-rich websites, both abroad and here in Iceland, to see is there anything similar to what the client maybe is thinking about, you know? And then we have to do wireframes. Do you know what wireframes is? Yeah, that's like sketching. And that can be like complicated, you know, you can draw this up in a tool or you can also just on a whiteboard start drawing, okay, do you maybe want to have the filters here or do you want to have the filters there? And this is for the client to like understand exactly what he, what he wants and then he can visualize it. And this process we basically iterate and iterate and iterate until we have requirements and a concept that then finally our developers can use and give us an estimation for. Because before that, we are just guessing. So there's nothing else than just guessing about what should be done. Now we know. So how does this process then go on? Okay. Then it comes to the project manager and developer. So we start talking. And I go in there and I say like, okay, we want to have it like this and that. And maybe sometimes we even have to take our developers into the first process because the developers have to maybe help us from some technical you know, issues about what type of a search engine are we going to use and what are the possibilities. But when it goes there, we have to explain the requirements and we have to let them challenge our concept because in the end, they're going to be building it. So it's better that we get all these questions asked now. So then we are going to discuss the technical challenges. And if the task is going to be very big, we are actually going to need more developers to come in. Because we shouldn't trust that one person just knows it all. They usually don't. So we have to get like another developer in and discuss all this that we are going to be doing. And then what has helped us a lot is just to do tests and prototyping. Um, if there is something that we are unsure of, we don't know how it is done because we have never done it before. Let's rather than prototype it now and test it before we sell the product and go all the way. And this time is definitely going to help you. It is a little bit costly, you know. You have to decide, are you going to invest in this or are you going to let the client invest in it? But this is definitely going to help you out because you are then going to be better, have a better estimation. And that is what we have, finally, when we have discussed this with the client and we have discussed this with the developer. So, 
now we of course have to put some buffer onto it and we have to like add all the you know risks factors in it as a product manager you have to do that um most of the times also like the developers are very proud they say like oh, i can do this within a day you know you have to be careful about that because you have to you know s depending on who you're talking to uh so you have to add all these buffers on top of it then in the estimation you should define what is included in the estimation but you should also include what is not included and this is very important because if something goes wrong you need this you know to see like okay hey uh, we never talked about it doing it like that you know we never talked about adding document certs pdf certs into the the offer um so if this you know if if there is something that you think about add that as being not included then discuss this with the client you know you have to do a meeting again and just talk about it and get the feeling and make sure that the client expectations are then really matching your estimation so this is all very good and helpful but probably all of you are thinking like yeah but why we don't have time for this you know and this costs so much time and a lot of money and you know no way that we can do it uh, this is probably going to anyways help you in the end because you know you're probably going to have l very less of failed projects you have to think about it too like that too but the reality is and this I, I couldn't make it more beautiful sorry this is also uh, just facts I tried to put this down the product category down um, because sometimes you just have to give an estimation so it's all very good if we can have the client and we can discuss this and we can have meetings and we can have developers and we can even get paid for it to do the concept that's the best but reality is companies come and they say we want to they want to do a short listing so they want to like get offers from five and then pick the two best and then do the concept with them and the real estimation so that is completely like guessing and it is completely like dating <laughs> you know it is like well i'm so good and i i just lie actually i tell that you know i'm much more cheaper i have to do it because i have to get to the estimation phase that's just a fact so if you're a client in here and you're doing shortlisting you're probably just going to get a very very you know it's it's just going to be guessing and and there is no other information and that's exactly what loy said before there's just no way because this is just guessing what we think that you need and most of the time we have to go very low so we get in so we say it is very cheap you know i hope that you get my point there so then 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 there is the case of the good information so that's often when we are doing public offerings uh, estimation does anybody have experience with public offerings here doing estimations public offer offerings is in uh, Icelandic utbot then we have very good information like we get 50 pages of pdf and we are supposed to estimate it and the bad thing is in the end the lowest price is going to win so we can ask questions but still it is guessing and i can make one example of uh, a very big public offering that was taking place in Iceland in February last year. Mm, it was very detailed requirements. And then came into the search part. And where it said, uh, by the way, it was uh, probably one of the largest websites that are being done in Iceland. <laughs> and it said, search should be very good. Everything should be found. You should be able to put in names in different, uh, you know, like grammatical way so you can search in a database like how can you you know find the correct information and basically the you know it should just be like Google and it's said in there it should be like Google you know and I think that probably we lost this deal because we <laughs> assume that if some somebody says that he wants to do it like Google is that he really wants to have an advanced search so this is also not enough because you there just have to go with your gut feeling do i you know do i want to risk it 
that the client really doesn't want the advanced search, and I actually just give him the simple search for this price. You know, so you, you have also a lot, you know, the risk is also that the client is going to be very unhappy in the end. Then you have the detailed information, and that you mostly just get by doing a paid workshop, or you do the concept and you get paid for it. And if you're a client in here, if you want to get a good estimation, if you want to have a successful project, you know, just rather pay for having the concept. In the end, you don't have to let that person maybe do it for you. You can then still go afterwards with a very detailed information and get an estimation for it. Then uh, we also have clients where we just do it on the fly. So we do it the HL way, the HL with the client. We, of course, work HL inside of our company. But there you don't need any, you know, there is no risk. You just have a budget. So it's also possible if the client is just really willing to say, okay, you get this budget, do whatever you want with it, and make sure that you just reprioritize the features. You know, that's good, uh, but it's still not the reality because I, there are very few companies that <laughs> that just can do that. You know, in the end, there is somebody who has to accept the budget, and you know, there has to be documentation written about it. So, the conclusions that I am actually want to give you as a takeaway from this lecture is number one: this is a process. So, in the beginning, when the client comes in and says, "I want to have a search." You know, go through the client with the, you know, with this. You know, go take, take it all the way. You know, ask the questions, do the meetings, go through the checklist that I put down before. Uh, and most important, be aware of the risk and the potential. So sometimes you have to go in cheap, or you have to go in with a lower budget, but make sure that you're not risking, you know, the relationship with the client in the end, or that you're going to lose the project. And the conclusion number two is, and this is something that I have been learning, is that the project manager is in control of this process. So we have had co project managers that don't know, you know, they, they, they just wish that the developer know, and they put maybe sometimes the re responsibility just away because they say, oh, it's too complicated for me, I don't understand it. But you have to understand it. You have to at least understand what the client wants. You don't have to understand the technology completely in details. But you really have to understand what it is about and what you are estimating. So you are in control. You are the API between the developers. and the, you know, So you have to be talking to both and do it good. And then just maybe the, pr you know, my personal, uh, you know, this is the one of the things that I just think it is most important is that be honest and be open. You know, go to the client and tell the client, sorry, I don't know how it is. You know, I just don't know. We have never done it before. You know, I can only tell you how I think it is. Uh, just be honest about it. And then also say no if you don't know. You know, we have been doing that, where we know that the client, you know, he, he doesn't even know himself. So also be honest and just say, no, we have to know more. So therefore, you know, be just confident, open and honest. So that's it for now. You can find me on all these media. I'm a lot on Twitter, but I've been noticing that there are not many people here on Twitter, on the UTMS and not so much going on, I think. Uh, also, we are just in the Drupal community. Please check that out if you need to. So, do you have any questions? Yes, are you thinking about 
have I ever had to stop the project because Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I can actually. Um, I'm thinking about how to repeat this question. Um, Sorry, uh, if you're in the process itself, but you come to the customer, there yes. is a limited amount of money. Where can you go from that, or? or Yes, so if I can, yes, that uh, is actually what I was describing before as being HL, how we do it, we may work HL with a client. We have a budget from the client and we just say, you know, there has to be 100% trust. And we say that, hey, we can only do the features and, you know, because we allow the client and also to change their minds. And that is the good thing, because in the beginning, if you have to do a fixed estimation, we have to be really strict that we don't go over it because we have to deliver the whole thing within the, you know, the product estimation. But we have clients where we are working on budgets, and we, but that involves a lot of trust. There has to be a lot of trust between us and the client where we just say that we can do you know, for 50 hours or for 500 hours or whatever. You know, we can just do what we can do. Yes, we have had that. If that answers your questions, question, do we have it often? No, because the client doesn't like it most of the time. Um, so therefore, we rather invest in a workshop, in a concept. We invest a lot in the beginning, and we let the client invest so we don't get into these problems. Some more questions? Yeah, we, if we have big clients or smaller clients doing HL with us, we have actually very big NGOs, that, which is very surprising, <laughs> because most of the time NGOs want to have a very fixed budget. But it depends on if the client is very, you know, they themselves have their own Drupal development team. So they actually know that they can always take over. And if there is some problems, if the budget will be finished, then they can keep on working on it. So I think the more technical and the more that the, you know, the client has control over it, then he more tends to go to the do it the HL way. But I would say two projects out of 20, 30, you know, maybe 30 are HL, or everything else is just fixed budget, you know, even though we then do it HL inside of our company to avoid, you know, that to have problems in the end. Any more? Yeah? Yeah, how to sell this to the customer that he has to pay for the estimation process? Good, good question. Uh, that is just to talk about it, to be very honest, and that's probably the last remark, is that if you are honest about it and you are telling, you can tell the client that this product is probably going to fail if we don't all know what we're getting to, then uh, the client is most of the time he he believes it, and this is also true. So, so therefore, we don't have we we let we we ask the client if he is willing to pay very limited budget of the whole budget that he has. It maybe it is around about two three days that it then takes in the end, but it is definitely worth it. <laughs> to do the estimation process, if I have any guidelines for it, no. No, every client is different, so it's very difficult to say, and that's the profiling that we have to do in the beginning. We have to understand how good is the client, is he technically, you know, available, you know, can he do this from the technical perspective, or is it just for the user, you know, where, where, what does he know, and, and the people who are with him? No, I don't have any guidelines. The only guidelines that we go through is exactly this. We make sure that we go through this process in all of our projects, and even in the shortlisting projects, we still just invest in it because in the end, it's going to be uh, a successful project and a very happy client. And our programmers are going to be very happy because they 
do not have all of these questions that we had in the beginning or assumptions about that the client is so stupid or always changing his mind because we don't have that anymore. Any more questions? Yes? We try not to uh, put this, uh, uh, if, if we add design to the wireframes, we try not to, because then we just start discussing that. And we, when we prototype, then we wireframe, yeah, we sketch, we, we draw it up. We think about where to, you know, where to put certain elements. Um, and we try to do that in a very, we use tools, online tools, uh, Mockflow is the tool that we use, but also most of the time we just draw it up on a whiteboard and then we take pictures and then we draw it up in Mockflow. So, yes, anything more? Good, if you have any other questions, I'm here and all day, so thank you very much for listening.